questions, be sure to know, uh, mention your agency's name so we can follow up if, if necessary. And uh, also, we're doing this in a webinar format, which means as of right now, uh, I think all the lines are muted. If you have a question as we go along, type it there into the chat box or hit the raise my hand button. And we have staff who are monitoring it in the other room who will either interrupt me or unmute your line. And we'll be sure to reserve time there at the end for lots of questions um, if we don't cover everything that's needed. Here's my plan for today. Uh, you see, we've been in the, in the lives business now for about a year. And uh, that first exercise was uh, educational, to say the least. And Yelp continues to pursue this standard and uh, recruits more and more jurisdictions. Well, it just follows that Decade Software, with all the work we do with uh, environmental health and health departments across the United States, ought to be right there in the thick of it. So it was early on, I want to say February of this year, that we negotiated with Yelp kind of a special deal. You see, Yelp, they struggle sometimes because their perspective is not a municipality's perspective. They uh, see things through their lens, and sometimes it's hard to communicate with health departments. And they've asked us to kind of be an intermediary. In particular, they've asked if we will uh, pre-qualify and stage and work with the health departments, then they, in turn, will give precedence to those feeds that we establish. Otherwise, without that special accommodation, they're just moving based on largest to smallest jurisdiction. And so if you're a, a medium to smaller jurisdiction, you may have a hard time getting their attention. So we think it's really relevant. Yet throughout the year, um, those who have questioned and seem to show some interest uh, struggled, I think, understanding the concept and implications of it. And that's why we're here today. So I'm going to go through the lives process one more time. Uh, I, I've got several questions that have been asked up till now. We'll go through all those. Then we'll reserve time for your questions. We'll easily finish before the 30 minutes is up with about 10 or 15 minutes of presentation, and then 10 or 15 minutes of questions as needed. So let's begin, shall we? Lives is just a standard. Like Excel as a file format is a standard, or CSV or HTML is a standard. It's just an agreed upon contract for how to make your data visible. Uh, we published an article in the Journal of Environmental Health, and we um, commissioned this infographic. And we thought the infographic did a better job than just words to try to explain what's going on. So let me just take a moment to walk you through this. And Sammy Norton, who's on the line, is committed to send this copy out to you when we're done. So don't kill yourself to take down a lot of notes. I just want you to know these basics. The concept is that your staff are out here doing inspections all the time, routine inspections primarily, in the course of their day-to-day -day business. And in my mind, um, the worst possible outcome for that work that represents your inspection would be to file it away and never think or look at it again. In my mind, we're looking for an opportunity to leverage that activity by informing the consuming public and also by convincing your operators to respond in kind to those matters that are raised. So in a flow such as what we're proposing, the work by the inspector is done using Envision Connect Remote or is conducted on paper with the relevant details being keyed into Envision Connect back in the office. You don't have to be in the field with computers to make this work, but you do have to have captured the routine inspections and violations at minimum. And of course, that's all being accumulated in Envision Connect. Now in Envision Connect, we culminate in um, a score. Some jurisdictions use a grade. Other jurisdictions might use a placard indicating a color. Green is good to go. Yellow might mean there were one or two issues, and so forth and so on. And what we're looking for to participate in lives is some sort of culminating outcome from the routine inspection that's pretty easy for a consumer to understand. And so assuming that's in place, then we work with you to flow that data in the live standard and put it out in a certain location where our friends at Yelp will reach out and grab it. They'll grab that file maybe once a day at midnight. It's not an interactive thing. They don't have humans on their side, and you shouldn't have humans on your side. This is one of those things where the servers wake up at midnight, and they know what they have to do, and they do their thing, and the data is exchanged, and then they go back to sleep. And that data, then, is consolidated and matched with the businesses that they're tracking already in their product. 
If you're not familiar with Yelp, I'm going to bring up the screens in just a few minutes. But the least you need to know at this point is that it's A, extremely popular. A lot of traffic is driven to Yelp. And then Yelp, in turn, drives a lot of traffic to businesses. That's an important nexus. Um, and that it's, it's pretty ubiquitous. People know about it. And it's going to get a lot more traffic than, say, your local website that the county or the city has put online to publish your inspection results. So we'll see those facilities match up with their businesses. And then the big, the big takeaway here is that we hope and we intend for consumers to be much more aware of the conclusion that your professional staff have made about the operations in the back. Yelp generally talks about operations in the front of the house. Was it clean? Was the food good? Was the service nice? Of course. But what we're looking to expand upon is the service that's going on in the back of the house that the Yelp reviewers wouldn't normally see. So that's the basic of it, one, two, three, four. And it's not terribly complicated if you break it down to those elements. The benefits that we talk about are that this is a very low cost way to take this data. We hate to see it just go in a file drawer and never be looked at again, and broadcast it. It amplifies it. It makes it visible for the whole world to see. It's consistent with what other large jurisdictions are doing, and I would say it's even a trend. <coughs> And we really want to take the positive angle. And we will work with you when you craft your press release to talk about celebrating those facilities that are really operating well. And we really want to support them by driving more traffic, more customers to those particular businesses. Of course, the subtext to that is that those businesses that are bad operators or marginal operators become aware of the influence of Yelp and the health scores and that they're behaving in kind, that is, that they're improving their processes. We even had an interesting um, experience here where one of the health departments with which we work um, routinely had to make data available to the local paper. And they would extract periodically all the permitted facilities, all the inspection results, all the violations, all the conclusions, and so forth, in order to satisfy that request for public records. With the live feed, because it's a standard, and any technical person can look to the standard and, and know what to do with that data, know what it means. They were able simply to point those requesters to this URL, kind of a website. It's a website not meant for humans. It's really a website meant for computers. But by pointing them to that URL, they were able just to satisfy that public records request. Because whenever needed, as often as daily, those folks go and grab uh, an updated snapshot of the inspection records and, and permitted facilities are going on. So it kind of killed two birds with one stone, and that made it kind of a nice win for that group. One of the questions that's on my FAQ is, well, that's all well and good, Daryl, but, but what does it look like when it's all said and done? It, it really exposes itself through Yelp in two ways. One is through their website, which is very popular, generates millions of hits every month. And the other is through their mobile app. So I'm just going to drill into their website here for a sec, because it's pretty easy, I think, for us to understand. So if you're not familiar with Yelp, its main mission is to track businesses and invite folks to uh, review them. Uh, the reviews culminate in stars, as you see here, a lot of comments. They also have an advertising component to what they do. All in all, it's to pair up consumers with businesses they would want to go to. And they do a great job at it. What we are able to add is, as environmental health professionals is this element right here. This happens to be Los Angeles County, where I simply started with a search for Chinese food. And I saw this right away, and I knew they were probably going to have an A. So I drilled in, and sure enough, they do have an A. This little tip, snippet here came from a Los Angeles County health inspector. And you can see it's hyperlinked. In addition to the A, I can see the hyperlink. And I can click on the hyperlink in order to identify the date and type of last inspection activity. Routine would be typical. The violations that were cited by that inspector, the grade, which you see up there on the right, and then even a brief history, which is under your control, going back three or four inspections and indicating in those cases what violations might appear. 
Now this is a good time to talk about how your data is presented through Yelp. So you don't get a lot of control over how the presentation goes because after all, you're fitting your data flows into a standard and then Yelp is taking that standard data flow and they're presenting it in a common fashion all across the United States. But it's true that you still have some important control and I think, I think we've picked up on the right points. One is when a violation is cited, this text that describes the violation comes right from Conlibs. This is exactly the violation description for the cited violation. One interesting tidbit is that in Los Angeles County, and I'm sure it's true in many other jurisdictions, the violations are listed in the affirmative. As you can see here, food contact services, clean and sanitized. Well, that's in the affirmative, it's positive. We, after negotiating with LA County and Yelp, added this in advance, this standard text, to make it really clear that we have this standard we aspire to meet, and it was this standard that was not met in this particular uh, instance. If your violations, by contrast, are cited in the negative, then we wouldn't need that leading text, and either way, it's up to you. You get control over this text. The next thing you get control over is how your score or, or result is presented. And there are a few easy examples. My bet is most of the folks on this call fit into one of them. One is a score. If, if, if your jurisdiction scores, perhaps out of 100, then it's the numeric score that can display here and on the page before. If your jurisdiction grades, then there's a special little bit of logic that we can figure with you that says if the score is from X to Y, then display this grade. If the score is from this number to that number, then display this grade, and that's how the grade appears. Third, if you placard, then we could do a similar type of technique by saying, based on logic that we build with your input and expertise, if the numeric score, and by the way, the score doesn't have to be a typical score like one would count up or count down based on um, the points assigned to each violation. A score could be calculated as number of critical violations. So we will work with you on that, but I'll just use score with air quotes to make it clear that we're going to define what that is. And so if the score is between a certain range, you could show the word green there for a green placard. If the score is between another range, you might show the word yellow or even show a yellow placard there. So we give the number in the live feed, but then we also give a little legend that says how that shall be displayed. And those are the ones we see most often. But really, it just boils down to this. It has to distill down to something that's easily consumable and understandable by the Yelp audience. They are not interested, that is, Yelp is not interested and long lists of violations with an expectation that their customers would know the significance of violation 11A versus violation 12B. That's just not what they're after. And we can understand and respect that. So this is the way in which the data will appear. If, in particular, you find a facility that doesn't have a health score, then just this little row does not appear. It's not a glaring indicator that the facility has not been inspected. In fact, it may have been inspected. It's just that certain aspects like, well, gosh, maybe you didn't match up the facilities uh, in this case, or it hasn't happened yet. Or maybe the type of inspection that occurred is not the type that you're pushing out through lives. Or it's even possible that there's been a change of ownership. And your policy is that following a change of ownership, the inspection work from the prior owner is muted so that the new owner can start fresh with a clean record. Those are all possible and perfectly valid under the LIVES um, uh, approach to things. So let me jump back in. The other way in which these things can appear is, is uh, through the Play Store or the App Store. Jump in there and search for Yelp. It's a free app. You can download it, install it, and you can see the same type of information on your mobile phone. This is really an inexpensive method to push your inspection results out and get them more traction. Um, decades keeping the cost low because we feel strongly that this open data movement is the right way to go. Uh, this is essentially identical to the fees for press agent. 
press agent is that website we have to publish inspection results, but those are dedicated just to one health department, one county. This, of course, integrates with the whole of the world, ultimately the United States anyway, um, to show your inspection results and score. And so you can get a sense here. If you're a little tiny health department, it's less than $1,000 a year. If you're a medium-sized health department to a small, then it's going to be about 2000 a year. And if you're a larger health department, it's going to be about 5000 a year. But ultimately, it's, it's a relatively, sorry, it is an extremely low-cost way to approach things. The second common question I am asked is, how long will it take? Now, recall for a moment that we made this bargain with Yelp. They're happy to have us qualify you in advance, uh, make sure that your data is good to go, um, help you understand your data and implications of how it will appear on Yelp, because their engineers don't speak your language. They just want to know, here's a feed, and it's good to go. So that lets things move much more quickly. We would estimate we'd spend about a week's worth of time to discuss with you what data you want to appear. And we'll ask you questions like, gosh, you know, um, over here on your press agent site, you show three years' worth of data. In your live feed, don't you agree we should show three years' worth of data? They should be in sync. Yes, we would agree. And over here, you just show routine inspections. You don't show follow-ups, and you don't show complaint investigations. Is that the same for lives? We probably would agree that's the same. And let's take a look at your violation text. Is that going to appear the way you want it to appear? Yes, it is. And back and forth. And so we'll spend that first week just getting the data flow the way you want. In the next week, we'll work with you to set up the server so that it's updated automatically. Overnight, while we're all sleeping, just wakes up and does its thing. We'll turn the whole kit and caboodle over to Yelp. And in week three, their engineers will take a look at it. Now, in that time, what they're doing is they're looking at your feed and they're validating that the facilities you regulate, the permits you issue, pair up neatly with the businesses that they have in their inventory. In some cases, you might be interested to know you have facilities they don't even know about. And that's a win for them because their inventory of businesses grows. Um, but overall, we're looking for a latitude and longitude if you have it. If you don't have it, they'll geocode. That means they'll take the address and do a best guess of where that facility is. And that combined with the name will be used in order to pair up your facilities to their businesses. Obviously, and they're not going to pair up 100%. We know that. Those that don't pair up perfectly, they put into a queue to be manually matched. So they have staff who will look at the lists and go, well, Taco Bell store number 443 is really the same as Taco Bell because we can see the addresses are the same. We can see everything else pairs up. And they will pair those in a way that all future reports for that Taco Bell will pair up. They won't have to do it every time. And really what they want to show in Yelp is they want to show the consumer-friendly name. We know in the Environmental Health Department, sometimes you augment that facility name in order to make it useful for you. So during that week three, that's what they're doing. They're making sure that the format is right. They're doing the pairing. They're assessing whether or not they can utilize your data as we presented it. If there's an iteration or two there, we will handle it. And then in the fourth week, we'll go live. If you're a larger jurisdiction, they may want to issue a press release. We would advise you to issue a press release. Those press releases should be coordinated between the two marketing departments because this is truly something to celebrate. I have just four or five questions that have come up in sessions before. I'm going to go through those. And then I'm going to open up the floor to other questions. So if some question has popped into your mind, go ahead and hit the raise hand button on the panel there. And uh, when I wrap up these bullets, we'll be able to unmute your line and talk about your questions. You do not have to grade to use this feature. You don't have to placard. You don't have to score. You don't have to use any particular culminating result from your inspection. But you do have to use one. So it may not be grading. It may be whatever is prevalent in your system. If you don't do any of those things, you simply list the violations or hand over the um, checklist, then we're not going to be able to qualify you for Yelp because they need that culminating conclusion. And so you know your data and you know whether or not that applies to you. What the user actually sees is what I showed. What you all see in the course of it doing its thing is all behind the scenes. 
that's what makes this difficult to understand, I think, is I can't show you I can't show you the queries executing, I can't show you the files transferring, I can't show you the facilities being matched because those don't have a visual component. They just do their thing. That's great because we're all too busy to mess with that independently. Ultimately though, what you can see is what I showed you in Yelp and, and in their mobile app. Let's talk for a second about bullet number four. This has caused some consternation, and I want to be up front with it as possible. When you publish a live feed, yes, that was prompted by Yelp. Yes, it's their engineers who have committed to us that they will draw your data and integrate it. But the fact is that because it's an open standard, the standard then is available for others to view too. Remember my example of the public records request and the local paper that could just go and draw down the data themselves? Well, the same is true here. So we can fantasize for a moment. There may be a kid in high school right now, doesn't know what he's going to do with his future, but he likes computers, and he's conceived of a new app, a new way to see this data that we're not thinking about right now. The idea of the open data is that he or his counterpart across the hallway could draw that data in and they could present it back in a way that adds value. That's a little unnerving to us, I know, <laughs> because we don't want our data to be misunderstood and we don't want to be called on the carpet for misrepresentation of our data. We get that. We can help you monitor that. But I will make the point that open data as a practice among municipalities is becoming the new norm. City of San Francisco, City of New York, and lots of jurisdictions in between are embracing the concept of whether it's where the fire plugs are or what the bus schedule is or whatever, that all this data should be available and visible. And transparent, I guess, would be the buzzword. And so we believe routine inspection results fall under that category. We can help you monitor who's accessing the feed, but ultimately the feed is out there. And I think it's a good thing. This fifth bullet here was raised in a previous session, if you're committed to the FDA voluntary program standards for retail food, standard seven is all about industry and community relations. And in the detail there, it talks specifically about websites and making your information available to more and to more people and more observers. So it may be that this is one technique you can utilize in order to meet standard seven. Before I turn uh, control back over to Sammy, I just wanted to show you a couple things. This is a sense of what the data flow looks like. Now, I brought it into Excel because Excel is convenient for us all to see. We give a unique number here. And this is our PR number from Envision Connect paired with the facility. If a facility actually has two or more permits, then you'll see the facility repeat but the two different permit numbers will be there. Think about Dodger Stadium and all the permits that are carried there. The latitude and longitude, as I indicated before, may or may not be provided by you. If you don't have it, it's no worry, because they will be able to go ahead and calculate that based on the address you provide in most cases. And then a phone number for the facility, my guess is they also use that to match as well. And there's a similar file then. Actually, I can give you a little quick summary of the files. These are the five files that go into the feed. It's a list of your businesses, it's a list of your inspections, and it's a list of your violations. In the feed info, it just talks about what version and when the file was created. And in the legend info, I'll open this, this is where we communicate how that numeric score translates into something that's, that's in this case, displayed as a grade, but ultimately could be a placard or a happy face or a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So all that is within our control, and that's all part and parcel to what Decade can do when we help you set up the feed. So with that foundation, let me ask Sammy. Sammy, do we have any questions that have come through? Daryl, we have a question here from Jim Williams, and it reads, what bias does Yelp apply to displaying these inspection results, if any? And you pose the example of Yelp placing restaurants with higher scores in greater search preference than those with lower scores. Okay, uh, great question. Let me restate it, and if I've misstated it, of course, you'll correct me. Is there a bias when Yelp has access to the inspection score? For example, will businesses with a higher score search or appear higher in search results than inspection, inspections, or I should say facilities with inspections with lower scores? 
no such bias has been conveyed to us. I'm anecdotally aware of suggestions that there might be a bias towards those that pay for advertising versus those that do not, but that is proprietary to Yelp and they haven't shared it with us. I've heard no indication that the um, inspection score has any impact on the order in which the results appear. I have a question that came through here to me. Um, will um, Yelp and Date, will Yelp and Decade also have the capacity to, to data stream the inspection report itself? Because we're working within the standard, and the standard is defined by the programmers as just this certain data flow, we do not have the capacity to um, add anything else into the flow, such as a PDF of the inspection report. What we can do, if you click through, is we can, for the agency information, offer a link back to your press agent site. And it's at your press agent site, or maybe your jurisdiction has kind of defined their own uh, web location where inspection results are published, then someone who's really, really interested could drill down and find it there. And then a corresponding question, what happens to press agent? Well, press agent and the live feed work hand in glove. I would recommend that the filters for both of them be the same. Two years worth of data over here, two years worth of data over there. Routine inspections over here, routine inspections over there. Uh, fixed food facilities excluding mobile and temporary over here. Fixed food facilities excluding mobile and temporary over there. And so that you avoid confusion between the two. But ultimately they're for two different audiences. Your press agent site, it's for those who perhaps want to see the full inspection. You can expose inspectors' comments. You have full control over the look and feel. And then, of course, the live feed. We're putting data into the machinery. Yelp is going to present it in a certain way, and that's not so much under our control. So I feel like the two work hand in glove. Sammy, those are the questions I had. Did you have any other questions from your side? Uh, Daryl, we have a question from Azeb from Seattle. Please, so we go ahead and unmute her so she can answer her question. Hi, Seb. Hi, Darren. We just, uh, you have just typed a question and sent it to you, which is, if you want to share a print, example, create data instead of create inspection results, how would we do that? Could you ask the question one more time? Was it if you want to share inspection results? I had a hard time hearing you. Yeah, the print, like a three-year data, instead of just a... Uh, one time straight line. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I beg your pardon, Zeb. I just had a hard time hearing you, but I picked up on the keyword trend, and now I'm guessing I know what your question is. Yeah, so well, did if you I got get it. Question, maybe. Yeah. Why don't you restate it one more time so everybody hears it? Okay. If we want to share a trend, like example for three years data, instead of a single inspection result, how would we do it? Okay. So to restate the question, if we want to focus on a trend, not just the most recent result, how could we do it? And the answer yes. is, in this version of Lives, they don't give us the capacity to do that. In this version of Lives, um, the data to compute a trend is there, but Yelp is only committed to showing on the main page for the business the most recent score. So this is one of those examples of that where you could probably visualize some young person in Seattle who's working madly at his or her desk and they've developed this great app and they're thinking to themselves, maybe because they know more about food safety than Yelp does, what's really important here is the trend. So I'm going to grab this live feed, but instead of just showing the grade or the score from the most recent inspection, I'm going to do some analysis on the trend and I'm going to show a diagram that conveys that more clearly. That's something they could do but it's not something that Yelp is committed to do currently. It is something that can be done on a press agent site, but not with Yelp. Good question. Sammy, do we have any other questions? We do not at this time. Well, I'm looking at my clock, and I see perfectly that we've ended almost exactly at 30 minutes. So let me take this opportunity to wrap things up by thanking you for your time, for wishing you a great weekend, a happy holiday season. I will ask Sammy to circle back around with you through email and share with you the PowerPoint presentation and share with you the info diagram so you have that on your desk. And then if you have any follow-up uh, questions, you can always reach out to me or to Sammy. 
and Sammy's contact information is right here at the bottom of the screen. She's at our standard decade phone number, extension 748. And these examples, we'll just make sure you get them through the, the, um, the PDF that Sammy will send shortly. So with that wish for a great weekend, I thank you again. Sammy, I think we're ready to wrap up. And you guys have a great afternoon. Goodbye.